Hello. So, I wanted to talk about, oh, I have the newest little scar here. Sleeping like a baby. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about the induction and uh, hospital experience and birth and all of that. Um, because, it, you know, it's always interesting, I think, these delivery stories. So, as you know, I got an induction because I, I let the due date pass and I scheduled the induction for two days after her due date. Um, because I wanted to give her a chance to come out when she was ready, but also I didn't want to wait too long. And I have been induced before. I was induced for my first kid, and um, the process is very different for from first time to the next time. Uh, my second kid w w was just I went into labor naturally. I had an induction. <clears throat> excuse me. I had an induction scheduled for my second kid, but I ended up having her. The, like the day before the induction was scheduled so which was fine um so I wanted to talk about this this induction because uh, I had a very weird experience very weird for me um yeah I, I don't really know what was going on but not not entirely because I have not experienced this before so I I kind of had a bit of a like a panic attack um, and this is not something that I'm known for like anxiety attacks and things like that I don't uh, it's not something that I that I really have I'm trying to think of a time in the past when I've had something like this and I can't I can't think of a time so but we'll start from the beginning um, the whole process of getting there. So obviously we knew when the induction was scheduled and the plan was to bring the girls or have my parents take the girls to their place anyway. <clears throat> so what we did was the four of us, uh, me, Nick, and the girls, the two girls, uh, went to my parents' house the night before and they have a spare bedroom so we slept in there and the girls have beds over there. So we all just, you know, went to bed that, like, you know, hung out, had dinner, went to bed and then Nick and I got up at like 4.30 ish um, and so we could get to the hospital at 5.30 so you know we could take our time get ready and go um, because for some reason they schedule you getting to the hospital like really really early in the morning before the doctor is there before all that stuff um, to get the Pitocin started but all of that change, changed and I'll tell you <laughs> why um, you okay? <laughs> she makes so many funny noises. It's hilarious. Um, she's very noisy. <laughs> but very good. A very good baby. Um, so, anyway, we, we get ready and we head out. And, uh, I'm, I feel completely fine. I am ready to go. I was even thinking, you know, man, we should have scheduled this thing a couple days ago just to get it over with. Um, but, you know, I was excited to finally be doing this and get this baby out. Uh, and we get there, we do all the check-in and uh, registration, I don't know, whatever, they, all the things they make you do. And we go to the room, I get all ready. And we're already in the labor and delivery delivery room. I mean, and uh, I put on my my hospital gown, and they, you know, I, I get in the bed, and they're like, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put your IVs in, uh, get your fluids started, and all that good stuff. So they put. Uh, it was like I can't even see it anymore. We're we're like a week and a half post all of this so it was it was in this arm somewhere <laughs> uh, they put the IV in and they started the just the fluids not not the Pitocin not the drug that actually gets your contractions going um, or it start, start, sorry starts dilating and and um, 
like if facing you more or whatever. They give me a check and they were like, oh, okay, so you're about, you know, 40% effaced and still only like three, two to three centimeters dilated. And, and something about what they said, like them saying that I had still changed so little from my last appointment, or at least what I uh, thought was so little, it started to freak me out a little bit. Like this process was going to take a really long time. And I, I feel like that's where it started. Like this panic attack that I had. Um, so I start thinking, you know, this is going to take a really long time. I'm going to have to be, uh, experiencing really painful contractions, like really painful ones for a long time before they decide to give me an epidural, which at this point I was already thinking, okay, I think I'm definitely going to want, definitely going to want one. But because of the last experience with the epidural where they gave it to me so late that, uh, Lily was literally like coming out when he was still putting it in my back. <laughs> like it was terrifying. I, I had to roll over and she just, she came out. And that was literally like the moment after he said he was done and I could lay down. Um, anyway, so I was worried that something like that would happen again. Things would go way faster, like would go really slow at first and then way faster than anybody was ready for. And I would end up with this crazy situation where they're putting the epidural in too late. And, and I just had all these things like swimming around in my head. And she was about to start the Pitocin drip. And I was just like, please, wait, stop. You need to stop. I feel lightheaded. I feel like, like woozy, like I might pass out. Uh, I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit and I don't really understand why. Um, like all of these thoughts, you know, were just so jumbled. Like they were there, but I, they weren't really clear in my head as to why I was so freaked out. Um, but yeah, so I just started like kind of losing it. <laughs> I was, I started getting teary. Um, and I was like, I don't know what happened, what just happened. I, I don't know what's wrong. Um, but I'm freaking out and I need to like, we, I can't don't start the Pitocin. Uh, and I was like asking them, you know, I was like, okay, I need to just go to the bathroom maybe and, um, chill for a second. And they were like, oh, okay, well you, you know, figure it out, figure out if you are good, we will come back in like 20 minutes or something, you know, give me, give you a 20 minute, uh, break, just think it out. And, uh, so they gave me 20 minutes and came back and were like, okay, are we ready to go? And I was like, yeah, let's do this thing. And as soon as she walked over to the machine, I, was freaking out again. Like, like, I don't even know how to properly describe it. I, it felt like I was, the, the closer she would get to it, like the more I felt like I was going to pass out. <laughs> and I was like, I really don't want to pass out or, or feel like this the whole time, the, the hours that I'm going to be in pain, like being in pain and feeling like you're going to, I mean, all of that stuff kind of happens anyway. I don't know. There was just all this fear about the upcoming pain. So I asked them, you know, like, okay, so when is the doctor supposed to be here? At this point, it's probably like 6, 6.30, maybe even 7 in the morning. And they're like, well, she usually gets in around 8.30, but she, like definitely before 9. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, well well, what, what's going to happen? And I, let's, I just kept asking, you know, what's, can you tell me the sequence? Like if I know what to expect, then I will feel better. And they were like, well, you know, we can call the doctor and ask her when she thinks she would be ready to break your water. And, uh, when she thinks the epidural would be good and everything. And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. Like call her and ask, like tell her that, I don't know. Basically I just wanted information and maybe I was stalling. I honestly don't know. <laughs> it was so strange. Um, 
but they were like, okay, we'll come back. We, we did this, we'll come back in 20 minutes thing, like all the way until, until the doctor got there. And finally, the doctor, she finally comes in and she's like, oh, and just before she came in, they were like, how about we go ahead and call the anesthesiologist so that he's ready, like make sure that he's here and ready to give you an epidural as soon as you say you want one. And I was like, can I say I want one like immediately? <laughs> can I, can we just do it like that? Do, do we have to wait? So the doctor comes in and I ask her the same thing. You know, I'm like, can you tell me what is going on or what is going to happen? The, the sequence of events and how much time I can expect for each thing. And I know that labor doesn't work this way, right? Like things kind of happen in their own time. But I wanted something to cling to time-wise like how long am I going to be in pain I know this sounds like kind of ridiculous right because this is a natural like labor is painful for most women it's just how it is but but then the doctor so she was like because I kept saying you know well the last times uh I had to sit here in labor for well with my first kid for hours until they gave me the epidural <clears throat> which is understandable because they have to make sure that your body's going to do the right things. With my second kid, uh, I had to, again, wait a few hours for this anesthesiologist who they all knew exactly who I was talking about. And they were like, oh, yeah, that guy. And apparently he has a reputation for not being well-liked over there. Like, he was good at what he did, but his bedside manner was terrible, and he took forever to get there and get anything done. And they were like, yeah, we have a different guy now, so uh, you won't have to deal with that. And um, and anyway, so I, I told them about these experiences, and what the doctor said, she was like, so it sounds like you have just had some really bad experiences in the past, and we're going to do everything we can to make this one much more enjoyable for you. Like much, maybe not enjoyable, but much better than the last two times. And I was like, okay, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> and this doctor, it was a different doctor than the last two times. Thank goodness, because I didn't, I wasn't a huge fan of that doctor either. But this doctor, she was really growing on me very quickly because she was very confident, very like, all right, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna start the drip, the Pitocin drip, and I'm gonna drip, break your water like right away. And that will get the contractions going, but because this is your third kid, we can be pretty sure that you're going to do just fine. And um, so we can go ahead and call the, the anesthesiologist in, like they said, as soon as you want. And I was like, really? Like, actually, as soon as I want? Because again, the last times, I, they kept telling me that he was coming. He, the anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist is coming. He's here. He's almost in. And it still took, when they told me that he was about to, to be there, it still took him like an hour to come in. And I'm having like hard contractions, you know, like bad ones. So anyway, <laughs> I, I'm still like uh, about that. No, but um, so she tells me that and I'm like, okay, all right, fine okay, I can get this thing to happen like right away. So let's do it. Um, and so she starts the Pitocin and I'm still like, I'm, I'm still like, who like kind of freaking out, kind of nervous. And, um, then she's like, all right, I'm going to break your water. And I'm like, um, and I had to like take another, I was like, let me go to the bathroom first <laughs> again, like just be alone for a second. And so she's like, okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> I know that I was like probably getting on people's nerves, which I hate, but that's what was happening. And I, I couldn't stop it. My brain just like couldn't stop it. I finally have a better understanding of what people mean when they say they're having a panic or anxiety attack. And I did not have a great understanding of that before, but I, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of get it now. So it's totally uncontrollable. <laughs> um, so I come back out and I lay down and I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's just do it. And again, I realized that it was the fear of the pain because the first time that I had gotten my water broken with my first induction, uh, 
the, the freaking doctor, it was like he was taking forever to do it. He used like this big tools, like this big pointy plastic thing. And it was like, he, I was like, what are you doing? This freaking hurts. It was really painful. Uh, worse than any of the checks that they had done. And he, it felt like it was taking forever. And I was like, I literally said, like, do it already. <laughs> like, do it. And he was like, I'm trying. That's how he responded to me. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this freaking hurts. <laughs> like, so I was afraid, again, of that, that pain. And she's like, oh, I use this different tool. It's, and it was, it was different. I don't, like, it had a, a smaller little point on, or like a little tiny hook. I don't know. It, it was smaller. It looked less scary. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right, just, just do the thing. And, you know, she goes in there and she puts the tool. And I'm just like waiting for the pain to start. And then suddenly she goes, all right, it's done. And I'm like, that didn't hurt at all. Holy crap. Like, I, the relief that I felt after that was done was amazing. Like, I, I felt so relieved instantly. The anxiety, the panic, it was all gone. And I was like, holy crap. Okay, there it is. It's done. My water's broken. I'm having this kid today. Like, this is happening. All right. And I was like, fine. I was fine. And then the contractions, yes, they started. I was like, all right, you know, you don't have to call the anesthesiologist in here, like, right away. We can give it a minute because they said they wanted to see that the contractions were becoming, you know, even. Um, and I had a few fairly strong ones. And I was like, all right, you can call him in here, uh, the anesthesiologist. And then this guy comes in and he's like, he brings his stuff in, gets everything ready right there in front of me. He doesn't ask me a million stupid questions like the other last, like the last guy did. Oh my God, that was so annoying. Asking me like literally every question. What's your name? What's your birthday? What's, what city do you live in? What day is it? Who's the president? Like asking all of these freaking questions. And I'm like, what are you? Stop. Just do the thing, dude. I can't fucking think right now. Okay. <laughs> like, please do the thing. But anyway, this guy is just like, they, the, the nurses and this anesthesiologist even said, they're like, no, I'm not going to ask you a million stupid questions. And, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm just so, I feel so validated that everybody knows this guy that I'm talking about and they all feel similarly. <laughs> so he does his thing. The, I will say that the, uh, getting the epidural was actually slightly more painful this time. It wasn't horrible, but, um, the, the last guy, as annoying as he was, did it a lot, like, less painfully. I don't know. But it wasn't that bad. I will take it. Um, so he, he puts that in, he gets it started, and it also felt completely different, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, <laughs> I could still, maybe it was the dose, maybe it was the type of medicine that they used, I'm not entirely sure, but... I could still kind of feel that I was moving and this was good. I wanted to still be able to kind of feel a little bit. Um, like what I mean, so I, everything that needed to be numb was numb, but I could still tell that my legs existed and I could wiggle my toes and know that I was wiggling them I couldn't feel it at first, but I could look down and see them wiggling. Before, I, with the last epidural, um, I could, or sorry, the, my first epidural, actually maybe, yeah. Anyway, I could not feel or move my toes at all. I had no power to do that. But with this one, I could actually move my leg a little bit. I couldn't quite feel it that much. I could feel it just enough to move it. So that was nice. <laughs> that was nice. Um, and the recovery from this epidural was much better, much faster. I didn't have like crazy shakes and everything like I did with the other one. Um, and yeah, so that, that was really interesting. And then, so things got going and, uh, sorry, this is going to be longer than I thought this video, but anyway, so then 
you know, I just, I'm, I just sit there and she's, the, the nurse is like moving me around different positions because they don't want you to stay in one position for too long. They want your body to like still move a little. And, you know, so she's switching sides on me and, um, oh, and the other thing I could feel the contractions still with the last epidurals. I couldn't feel them at all, but this one, I could still feel a tightening of my, in my upper, like stomach, my upper belly up by my ribs. It was it was uncomfortable, but not, you know, like, real contraction pain-wise. Like, it was uncomfortable, but I could handle it. Um, I mean, yeah. But, yeah, so she tried to lay me on my back, like, sitting up, and I was like, this is not going to work. Like, the, the contractions were too, like, strong up. It felt like I was breathless. Like, I couldn't do it. I... I was actually like feeling a little lightheaded or, and stuff, not, not panic attack wise, but just, I don't know, like it was putting too much pressure on something in there. So she's switching me back and forth and then the doctor comes in and she's like, okay, so you're five centimeters now dilated and we're, Nick and I are like, okay, so like how much longer, you know, do you think we'd have? And she's like, well, honestly, it could take you, actually, this was the nurse that said this. She's like, well, you know, it could be one hour. It could be five hours. We're really not sure. Um, but things are usually go faster after you get to five centimeters. So Nick is like, okay, well, it shouldn't take me an hour to go get a sandwich. So he runs out and he was like, you know, the nurse is like, um, okay, well, you know, just be quick, <laughs> just in case. And I'm like, all right, go get your sandwich. And uh, because there was a sandwich just down the hill from the hospital, or a sandwich, <laughs> there was a restaurant just down the hill from the hospital. And um, so, of course, he leaves and they come back in and check me. It's been like half an hour and they come back in and check me and the nurse is like, oh, geez, like you are already, you know, almost... 10 centimeters and I we I think it's about time to go we're going to get the doctor in here you might want to call Nick and tell him to get his butt back here if he wants to be here for this and I'm like oh crap okay so and she has me move again because apparently the uh, scar was like slight very slightly transverse she wasn't quite lined up right so she has me turn and whatever and the doctor comes in and uh they're like she she checks me and she's like, oh, yep, the cervix is gone. It's totally gone. That means you are ready to go, ready to push. Uh, so let's get everything set up and, and do this. And I'm like, oh, crap. And then Nick comes rushing into the room and he's like, okay. like I'm like, you're good. You made it. It's fine. <laughs> and uh, then they have me do a practice push. And like they're, you know, they're down there looking at stuff and I'm like, pushing and they're like oh okay stop 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 apparently they just wanted me to do like a little bit of a push just to see how well I would push and they were like like you know we're, we're okay we, we need to actually get ready for her to come out and I'm like I thought I, it was confusing it was a weird situation they just wanted me to push a little bit so that I could make sure that or that they could make sure that she was lined up properly and Um, make sure that everything was lined up properly and that I would be able to push. So they are like, oh, okay, you're, you're good. You're pushing really, really well. So we're going to go ahead and get this all set up. And, uh, then they get everything set up and I'm kind of sitting there like, I feel like you should have had this set up before, but anyway, so then, uh, everything's ready and they tell me to push. And I think it was like, I don't know. <laughs> It only took a couple minutes of pushing, not much pushing at all, and out she came. She was ready to go. And that, yeah, so that was it. I was like, wow, okay, great. <laughs> Honestly, aside from the panic attack, panic anxiety, whatever it was, attack, uh, this was the easiest labor and delivery uh, and so far recovery that I have had of the three. Um, <clears throat> I'll get a little more personal here and say... I did not have, um, I didn't have any tears. Uh, the, I actually, throughout all three of these 
deliveries, I never had any tears, which is freaking awesome. I mean, I, it was a slight fear of mine and now I'm just like, well, damn, okay. I, great. I will take it. Um, and then everything else, like down there, honestly, like I almost at a week and a half out already feel pretty much normal. Um, I actually felt pretty normal right out, like pretty much right away. Uh, I didn't have any swelling. I didn't have anything, anything crazy, like, which is freaking awesome. Um, and the TMI, but the, the bleeding isn't even really that bad at all. Uh, yeah, freaking lucky, like freaking lucky. And the funny thing is, this is the biggest kid I've had. She was eight pounds, uh, almost 13 ounces. That is a pound bigger than my second kid, who was a pound bigger than my first kid. So, yeah. And then, like I said, the epidural wore off really nice and easy and fast. And, uh, yeah, it was actually pretty chill. Pretty chill. Nowhere near as crazy as the second time, the second kid. Um, and nowhere near as painful and annoying as the first, the first experience. So that is basically what happened. And then we were only there for a total of like, oh God, I, we ended up leaving the next day. Um, because like I said, I don't want to be in the hospital. I, I said this in a previous video. I don't want to be in the hospital for a really super long time. Not interested. Um, baby got all checked out. She was perfect. Uh, we went with Scarlett because she literally came out. She was like super red, bright red, and she had a temper. <laughs> and we were like, well, I think it has to be Scarlett then um, of the other names we've chosen. So so she, she is Scarlett and it, it suits her. <laughs> but yeah, it was, yeah. And then, you know, next day I took a shower and just waited basically for time to go for them to check her out at the 24 hour mark. And, um, then we got out of there pretty much after like maybe a couple more hours of making sure paperwork was good. So yeah, that's my story. Um, very interesting. If you're getting an induction or anything like that, you know, make sure to talk to your doctor about what they actually, like, because I didn't know it could be that easy. I didn't know that it could be that chill. And so I'm very happy that this doctor that I had was like, no, you don't need to go through all of that pain. Like, this is your third kid. We're pretty sure this is all going to go fine. Um, you don't need to sit here for hours in pain. So, and, and she was like, I've been doing this for what, whatever she said, 20 plus, 25, 27 years or whatever. You know, I, I got you. She was very confident, made me feel a lot better. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm very glad that I had this person as my doctor. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Overall, freaked out at first, but after that, good experience. Uh, now I have this little, this little chunker, and she is, like I said, she's a good, she's a good baby, and uh, everything seems to be good, except for one thing. I will, and I'll talk about this in a different video, but uh, I had some baby blues, and uh, I will, I want to discuss that in a different video because. It was very interesting. I have not had it before. And I would like to share that experience and have it on record in case, it, just in case this ever happens again, you know. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, please leave them below. And um, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. If you want to check out, if you care, you can check out my previous, like all the weeks up to now. Um, and yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>